G'day Cobblers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Yards Full Driving, we're going to show you how to balance your lithium ion phosphate cells for your DIY battery solution, charging your accessories in the back of your full drive. Stick around to the end because we'll show you how you can increase your balancing speed by up to 300% using the equipment you already have. So, let's get into it. Now before we get into top and bottom balancing, or even if we should be balancing in the first place, let's have a look at parallel and series battery banks. So we have four batteries here, one, two, three, four, and they're all 3.2 volts, and our capacity is 280 amp hours. And we've connected up all the negatives together, and we've connected up all the positives together. Now, with a battery bank in this configuration, in between our negative and our positive, it's the same as our supply voltage of one battery. So in this case, 3.2 volts. But our amp hour capacity, it actually adds up. So it's a cumulative figure of all the individual batteries. So in this case, our amp hour total is 1,120 amp hours. Now let's check out a series battery bank and how it connects up. So we've got our main negative just like before and our main positive, but that's where the similarities end. So our main positive connects to battery one positive only. Battery one negative connects to battery two positive. Battery two negative to battery three positive. Battery three negative to battery four positive. And of course, finally, battery four negative is our main negative. So we've got this BMS here. Now our BMS stands for Battery Management System. And you can see it's got individual wires heading out to each terminal. So it can actually tell the voltage across each terminal and that becomes important later on but when we're working out the overall voltage in between our main positive and our main negative we actually add it this time all the voltages are added so v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 equals our v total now considering there's a nominal 3.2 volts across each cell that gives us a nominal total voltage of 12.8 volts but our capacity, unlike before where we added them all up, is just a total of one cell. So our capacity in amp hours is 280 amp hours total. Okay, let's get into the meat of it, which is actually balancing. So let's have a look at how the cells come from the factory and that's unbalanced and why we want to balance them in the first place. So cell one, 100% 100 of rated capacity. So we've actually got what we paid for, 280 amp hours out of a 280 amp hour battery when it's charged up to 3.65 volts. Now the red part up top here denotes an overcharge where we're damaging the cell. And the red part down the bottom here, well that denotes an undercharge or under 2.5 volts, again where we're damaging that cell. Cell two, 90% of rated capacity. So we didn't do quite as well there, we got a bit ripped off. <laughs> and we get 252 amp hours out of 3.65 volts when charged up to the top 3.65 volts cell three even worse there we're down another five percent so when it's charged up to 3.65 volts we get 238 amp hours out of that battery and finally cell four well that again that's 85 percent of capacity rated capacity 238 amp hours at 3.65 volts but you're not always going to get the same voltage in every cell from the factory. So in this case, in this scenario, we got 3.25 in cell 1, 3.65, so fully charged in cell 2, 3.27 volts in cell 3, and cell 4, well, finally 3.65 volts, so that one's full to the brim as well. When you attach a BMS to a battery pack, it's going to draw evenly from each and every cell. So this could be the state of charge line, and then it moves down uniformly down each cell. So when it gets to the bottom, it turns off, and it will turn off at 2.5 volts when any of the four cells reaches 2.5 volts. Now in this scenario here, cell three was the cell that tripped the BMS and told it to turn off. So we will limit it at the top by the capacity of cell two and cell four, and we're limited at the bottom by the capacity of cell three. So out of our battery pack of 280 amp hours, we only got 80% of our battery pack capacity or 224 amp hours. How are we gonna fix that? Well, that's what top and bottom balancing does. Now let's have a look at the discharge curve of a lithium iron phosphate battery and how we can use it to our advantage to maximize the storage capacity in our DIY battery solution. 
and there's the curve. Now on the left hand side obviously we've got the voltage and along the bottom here we've got the depth of discharge ranging from 0 to 100. 0 of course being a fully charged battery and 100% being a fully discharged battery. What you'll notice about the graph in between about 10% here and about 80% here it's, it's pretty flat. There's not a lot of voltage variation there which is a great characteristic for a battery to have. Fantastic characteristic for a battery to have if you're actually using it especially with resistive loads because it's nice and consistent but when you try to differentiate states of charge using a multimeter it's not that good let's show you why so let's say we're 20 percent depth of discharge your multimeter would be reading 3.25 volts and when we get to 60 percent depth of discharge your multimeter would only be reading 3.22 volts and that's only 0.03 volts in between the two states of charge 40% state of charge difference between the two, or depth of discharge between the two, 0 0.03 volts. It's very hard to tell the state of charge of a battery anywhere in this section here. So you need to look for a steeper part of the graph. And the only two steep parts of the graph are up the top here and down the bottom there. So when we're at this state of charge here, it's a steep part of the graph. So we can easily, using a multimeter, tell the state of charge difference between the individual cells to maximize the storage capacity. Likewise, at the bottom part of the graph here, when we minimize the amount of voltage, so we could discharge down to about 2.5 volts or thereabouts, consistent between the batteries, and we could easily differentiate the states of charge in between those batteries. So that's why we either bottom balance down the bottom here, or top balance up the top here, because it's really the only consistent way to tell the state of charge differences with a lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay, on to top balancing. And this is how you top balance the batteries. So we charge up each and every cell, regardless of its capacity, to 3.65 volts. So they're all full. And when we attach the BMS, you've got to remember the BMS is going to draw an equal amount of capacity from each and every cell. And it turns off at 2.5 volts when one of the cells, regardless of which one it is, reaches 2.5 volts. In this case, it's reached 2.5 volts in cell 3 and cell 4. So cell 4, we've used all of our 85% capacity. In cell 3, we've used all of our 85% capacity. In cell 2, well, we've left 5% capacity on the table. And in cell 1, unfortunately, we've left 15% of cell capacity on the table. But you're limited in your battery pack by the cell, or cells in this case, with the smallest amount of capacity. So we'll still use... 85 or retained 85 percent of our capacity or 238 amp hours and that's as good as we're going to get now let's check out bottom balancing now just like top balancing we need to get each and every cell to a consistent voltage but this time remember we're on the right hand side of that lithium ion discharge curve where the gradient is at its steepest so we need to get to that 2.5 volt mark in each and every cell once we've done that, we're starting off on an even kill with 0% capacity in each battery. We turn on the BMS and it's going to keep charging up these cells at a consistent rate. So when this one's 20, this one's 20, this one's 20, this one's 20, right up until one of the cells or multiple of the cells in this case reach that magic 3.65 volts. Now, when we get to that 3.65 volts, the BMS will turn off. Now, we will still be leaving 5% capacity on the table in cell 2 and 15% capacity on the table in cell 1, unfortunately. But that's as good as we're going to get. We're still limited by the cell or cells in this case with the least amount of capacity. And we'll get four times that. So, at 85% or 238 amp hours, we have exactly the same capacity as top balancing. So, we don't have an advantage capacity-wise top balancing versus bottom balancing. There's primarily two ways to balance your cells whilst in use. One being a passive balancer and the other one being an active balancer. We'll look at passive balancing first. Now these can either be a standalone unit or as in my case built into the BMS that I'll be using in the next episode. At the moment we're charging up all four cells until one of the cells and in this case cell one reaches that magic 3.65 volts. At that stage the BMS turns off the charge to all four cells and that's an issue because these three cells aren't fully charged and will be limited to the whole pack by the lowest charged cell in this case cell three the next thing that happens is a passive balancer actually turns on and starts discharging cell one it runs it through a resistor so the energy is being wasted to heat not real efficient <laughs> 
Okay, but it does start charging up these three cells until cell four reaches 100%. Again, the passive balancer starts discharging cell four as well as cell one, bringing up the charge in these two cells. Next one, cell two. Passive balancer says, okay, you're now at 100%, so we should start discharging you until cell four reaches 100%. When cell four reaches 100%, well, the passive balancer can then turn off because all of your cells will be in complete balance. And that's how a passive balancer works. Now let's check out how an active balancer works. Now these active balancers can either be DC to DC charger, inductor, or capacitor base. We'll check out how the DC to DC charger works now. Okay, so we've been filling up these four cells using the BMS until one of the cells, and in this case again, cell one reaches that magic 3.65 volts. And it turns off the charge to all four cells, which is an issue because these three cells are charged up. So the active balancer then starts drawing power from cell one and then puts it into the cells in a lower state of charge until the next cell reaches 100%. Then the active balancer then starts drawing the power from two cells and puts it into the last two cells, which are a lower state of charge than 100%. And it keeps going. Three cells are now at 100%. It starts moving the charge from these three cells down through the active balancer and back into cell three until all cells reach 100%. And the great thing about an active balancer, you'll notice it didn't waste any of the energy or a negligible amount of energy anyway. Until all cells are charged up, the DC to DC active balancer can then turn off because we're in perfect balance. And that's how an active balancer for lithium ion phosphate battery packs works. Now here's the part you've all been waiting for. How to speed up the process of balancing your cells using the equipment you already have. So this is traditionally how you do it. You set them all up in parallel. You turn on your power supply. Now your 50 or $70 power supply flea bay special will be current limited to about 10 amps or so. Okay, so that gives a 9 and an 8 watts of charging energy per cell. Total there, 36.5 watts of total energy coming out of this power supply going into your cells, recharging them up. Is there a better way? I say there is. Let's have a look at it now. And here is the trick. Doing most of your balance charging in series, not parallel. Hear me out. So we connect all of our cells in series and we attach our BMS just like we'd be constructing a battery. Now you can set your BMS to about 3.6 volts. Set your power supply this time to 14.6 volts because that is 3.65 times by four. You're still current limited to that 10 amps, but this time we got 36.5 watts of charging energy going into each and every cell with a total of 146 watts. That is a 300% increase in energy going into these cells. And of course it's less than the 280 amps they're rated for, so that's fine. Now, once the BMS trips at, let's say that 3.6 volts, then you're going to have to reconfigure the battery in parallel and finish them off to that 3.65 volts. And then you can do your capacity testing. That's it. That's how you save a considerable amount of time using the equipment you already have. Now you know all the theory, let's get into the practical component. Now the astute amongst you will notice that there's only three cells here and not four. And that's because one of them was stuffed straight out the box. So I can't use the BMS to charge them up quickly. I've got to do the slow poke way. All right, I'll fast forward this bit so you don't have to watch it. But what we're doing is we're getting all the bus bars and we're just joining them all up in series. So all the positives along here and all the negatives along here. Here we go. And that's the last one tightened up. Now I've already set my power supply to 3.65 volts. So all I need to do now is connect the positive to the positive rail and the negative to the negative rail. That's done, now you can see down here it's drawing a little bit over 20 amps and that's fine because that power supply is actually rated to 40 amps. Beauty, all now I have to do is wait for this to reach zero amps. <laughs> and then we're all balanced up at 3.65 volts. Now guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.